Hi everyone, Wendy James here. Wow, part one uh, ended quickly, dang. <laughs> uh, instead of redoing it, I decided to just immediately roll into another 10 minute section and we'll call it part two. So sorry I left you in the lurch there after part one. Again, my name's Wendy James, I'm a professional psychic and you're tuned in to the very beginning of a small series I'm gonna be doing on psychic development and this is the second part the first part we simply touched on uh, letting go of limited thoughts uh, opening up to that all things are possible and uh, letting go of fears so in this section little another 10 minute section uh, we're gonna discuss um, kind of how do I know it's psychic versus thought how do I know when I have um, an intuitive vibe how, how can I be sure that I'm uh, really actually feeling it as psychic information or whether or not I'm just being very creative and coming up with some thoughts here? So one of the things that I often tell people is to ask yourself, honest to God, ask yourself, am I thinking this or am I feeling this? Is this, is this in my heart? Am I, is this just in my heart space or is this up in my head? You know, when you get a gut feeling on something, say say um, the phone's ringing and you, you know who it is, you just know, and you're with a friend and they turn around and they're like, how did you know, how did you know? And the only thing you can simply say is, I don't know, I just knew, I just knew. That's a feeling that's coming from your heart chakra, which is right in the center center here of your beautiful form. And that's a beautiful, bright green light and it's gorgeous and illuminated. Um, when you get a heart feeling, when you get a gut instinct, that's where it is. When you're thinking, when you're feeding into the, the wild mouse on the wheel of your head or, or you want so bad to have a psychic experience that you're creating it kind of creatively up in your head, you can tell that that's a thought. If you're being very honest and really ethically sound with yourself, it's really important to ask yourself, am I thinking this or am I feeling this? Is this an intuitive message or is this thought? And really important, sometimes you'll get caught between the two. You know, as a professional psychic, I do readings all the time. It's my full-time job. But a lot of times when I'm reading, I have to ask myself, especially if I really know the people. I like reading for people I don't know very well at all because then I'm not attached. I can't use any past knowledge about them in my head and, and get blocked in that. I have to, I, my logical mind's out of the way. And I'm only going with gut feeling and instinct here. But if I'm reading for somebody that I know very well, like a, a friend or a family member, and I know their stuff, it's really important that I get my logic or my mind out of the way so I can be objective, so I can listen to what I'm feeling from, from my heart center, from what's going on in there. So oftentimes, as, as working with your own psychic self, you're gonna be asking yourself, over and over again. Am I thinking this or am I feeling this? Is this thought or intuition? So get, get ready for that as you develop psychically. It's a common question and an important one to ask. Another thing that I will tell you is that it's extremely important, and I'll tell you a lot of reasons why, to work for the highest good, okay? Use your powers for good, not evil people, but also because if you're working for the highest good and you have that behind everything you do psychically, you want to do a tea leaf reading, you're doing it for the highest good. You want to learn to read tarot cards, you're doing it for the highest good. You want to analyze your dreams and get into that, you're doing it for the highest good. I don't want you to get all crazy and manipulative and all voodoo-esque. I love voodoo though. Voodoo's good stuff. And sometimes we'll talk about voodoo. But what I mean is the the the... Um, inaccurate, um, maybe Hollywood twist on, on evil cursing and dark spells. Sure, those things are possible. Not easy to do. But a lot of times what you're simply creating is chaos. And a lot of times if your intention is not for the highest good psychically, you're not going to be getting accurate information. And I'll be honest with you, if you're fiddling around and screwing around with that shit, uh, I'll tell you, you're going to be misled by your own psychic self because somewhere inside, you've got a little uh, a conscious, honest aspect to you. No matter how tricksy or manipulative you decide you're going to get within your psychic self, I can tell you, you have an inner governor 
that's going to fiddle with you and mislead you in your information that you're getting. And quite frankly, it's going to end up um, taking you down a dark road. So let's avoid that. Let's get back to the good stuff for the highest good. This is what you're going to word before you're doing anything. I'm getting used to making these videos and I'm sorry I keep fiddling with my pen. I gotta stay focused on what I'm doing. Okay. I also want you to recognize that you may have various times of day or times of the week or times of the year where you're more open psychically. I can tell you straightforward, if I'm if I'm full, like if I've had a really big meal, I'm not as psychic as I am when I'm on an empty stomach. And I have another professional psychic, a great friend of mine, when he's hungry, he's not as accurate or he doesn't feel as on the key. So what I will say is be tuned into little variances. If you're sitting down to do some psychic work or you're sitting down to do some psychic exercises and you're not getting anything, don't automatically assume that you've failed it or that it's not yours to have. Pay attention. Maybe you're better in the morning than at night. I personally, no, 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 no. I can't do psychic work very well in the morning. I can do it. But I am working harder at it because I'm a night owl. I'm up really late. I'm better the later at night it goes. When I was doing morning radio for a while, I actually would do all-nighters and stay up all night so that I could be really tuned in psychically. And I'd come home after the radio show was over uh, in the morning, you know, and go to bed then. But it's because I knew that if I'm a little bit further into the day versus just waking up, I'm more accurate. I'm better at it. It took me a long time to figure that out, though. To be honest with you, it took me about 15 years to figure that out in my career. All right. Uh, so pay attention to your power times. Um, you may find that uh, for you, doing a psychic, uh, a bit of psychic exercise in the evening between coming home from work and getting dinner ready and you've got a lot of hubbub and chaos going on in your house and you're trying to slam out a little psychic uh, exercise, you know, a little psychic workout before you jump up and make dinner. My feeling maybe not the best time. You are always psychic. It's always with you. It's right there. But maybe if you respect the process just a little bit and wait till the kids are in bed, then you're probably quite tired. Wait till the weekend, midday on a Saturday when you <clears throat> have a little time for yourself. Or try a different time of day or a different day of the week. Um, sometimes looking forward to it in advance, knowing, okay, on Sunday, I'm going to give myself a couple hours with some meditating, maybe a little bit of journaling, a little bit of good stuff, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. Um, but being able to look forward to the fact that you're going to do some psychic work, you're going to go to work psychically, in my opinion, is the best way to set your subconscious mind ready that, oh, how exciting, here comes Sunday, now I'm going to do psychic work, versus trying to hash it in throughout a very busy day, I think you'll find that you get better results by simply planning for it, respecting the process enough to sort of make sacred time or sacred space for the expansion of your psychic self. Again, it's always with you. You have it with you every day of the week. But to really try and pick what your power times will be. For some people, it's it's um, moon cycle. Some people are very, very tuned in psychically when the moon is full or when the moon is, is dark. It's still up there, it's just that it's blocked by a shadow. Uh, but some people are, have more power time during the brighter nights of the full moon and other people, maybe they're a little more bang on with their psychic self during a new moon. So start a psychic journal. If you're really going to develop yourself psychically, I encourage you to start a psychic journal. Pay attention to the patterns that work for you. Even just with the few things we've talked about, start to make notes about the stuff that we talked about in the first part, in part one here. And in part two, pay attention to what your power times are. Pay attention to how often it's in your head and how often it's going down into your heart. Pay attention to, uh, for you, whether or not you're, you're, you have a cycle. Um, um, some people may find that they're wide open in the spring or the fall, but not as much in the winter and the summer. Um, you know, psychic development is a, a long-term uh, investment in yourself. It's, it's about giving yourself the time to practice, 
to start to take notes, to be your own little investigator of how it's opening up for you. You can't rush this process. I sometimes have people come and take my class. I teach psychic development. I've been teaching it for 18 years. And I have people that'll come and they've studied with amazing gurus all over the planet. They've read like book after book. They've gone to amazing courses. They paid lots of money for all this great stuff. But they keep seeking <clears throat> Sometimes to just get a course or take a course and suddenly it's going to click. And what I found is that it's really important to remind people, you've got to study. You can't just read it and gather the knowledge of it. You've got to get your hands dirty. You've got to start to work on those meditations. You've got to start to pay attention to your own self. To yes, read books. Yes, take courses. Yes, watch tutorials but also sit quietly within yourself to tune in, to fine tune in. Oh, there goes my pen again. <laughs> to fine tune in, sort of like radio waves, what works best for you. And again, as we were talking about in the first part, fears and things and what your blockages are, but to also open up to how you receive messages because I can assure you every single one of you who's watching this is going to receive messages different than me. And every other psychic that I know, and I know hundreds of them, there's a lot of them out there. Okay, maybe not hundreds. Let's be honest here. I probably know about 90 of them. Anyhow, every psychic that I know receives their messages differently. They get different visuals. They get different sensations, different downloads. I have another friend who's a psychic who every time she does psychic work, she launches in geometric geometric shootings, like out into space in her mind's eye, she is seeking her information by shooting out into the star space and working in geometrics, really fascinating stuff. But the way her psychic self speaks to her is incredibly different than how my psychic self speaks to me. And I will say to you that your psychic self is as unique as your fingerprint. It is unique and it's all yours. And for you to accept that it will never be exactly as you've read in some book from somebody else, it will never be the same as your best friend's psychic development. This is your psychic development. And for you to let it unfold as unique as it needs to be in the pace that it needs to. So thanks for tuning in to number two. This is Psychic Development Part Two. It's Wendy James. Thanks for joining me, and I'll be doing part three soon.